we came, we saw, we kicked its ass. But how early did you kind of come onto the Inhumans as a kind of a, as a show? Were you there very on during the development? Yeah, no, basically what happened is that they announced that they were doing it. IMAX involved, uh, they were producing it together with Marvel. And then they were looking for a director very early in the stage. So there was no script yet. It was just a treatment. And then I was one of the directors they interviewed for it. And, uh, and they liked my ideas and I got the job. Mm. And uh, I know you spoke briefly in the screening about using IMAX cameras, but what was the challenge using it? Because it's such a kind of different form of movie making effectively yes no no the ch there was not really a challenge it's more it was like a yeah, yeah it's a challenge to make it cool right that was the challenge um so in the designing of the sets we will we designed the sets really vertically and give the ceilings a lot of detail so i could do really low angles and see the world but also uh, i did a lot of kind of looking at marvel uh sorry looking at different movies so IMAX showed me scenes of what they liked in IMAX format and what they disliked in IMAX format. So, for example, they did not like a handheld shaky cameras mm. because in IMAX that looks awful. So it kind of uh, dictated the style I could do these episodes, but it really uh, tuned in in my original style anyway. Because I, when you see my movies, I really like big wide angle shots mm. and then really big tied up close ups. And I did the same now with Inhuman, so I could keep my style and uh, and play with the format. What was such a blast because I'm I'm such a fan of IMAX. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm really if if I can see a movie, I would watch it in IMAX first. Yeah. Yes, yeah, the superior movie going experience yes. is what you want. And how do you balance the kind of idea of it being a family drama because that's mm -hmm. what it is in the comic books. Effectively, it's a family drama and also a large action series, was there kind of struggle to find a kind of coherent balance between the two? No, there was not really a struggle. I think from the moment, from day one, I kind of found the in-between and also in the screenplay, we kind of development, we found the balance between the two. Um, so yes, it's a family drama. It's kind of a uh, Game of Thrones kind of construction mm. about these heavy the themes between the characters and a lot of depth in the characters but also it has the fun and the action and cool stuff and uh, I think it has the right balance uh, to be very attractive for, for a large audience. Yeah and I'm not too sure kind of are you aware of what channel mm -hmm. is going to be broadcast in the UK because I'm not too sure if we've even made aware of it yet. No I know that there's negotiations and I think in the next few days they try to uh, choose the one that's gonna <laughs> do it, yes. But I think uh, there are two or three that really wanna do it. So yeah. Could you talk about what it was like working with Marvel and Kevin Feige and Jeff Loeb, as like a, you know, they've kind of become these superstars in, in themselves in their own right. What was yes. it like working with them? No, they're absolutely superstars. Yeah. So I was really nervous in the first time. Mm. But um, the, the cool thing about them and about Marvel in general, they're so passionate about their products about the characters and about the stories they want to tell and i'm also a very passionate director mm. so i really felt at home uh, and being uh, challenged of doing the best version of any idea so and the working with marvel was really a a really nice collaboration because they really and uh, they really gave me the room for my vision and for my ideas and even when it came up with I even came up with, with inhuman characters that I wanted to create and they were really open for that and they're also in my episode. So I got a lot of freedom, but when it comes to costumes or iconography or tie-ins with other uh, properties, they were always very involved. I always had like a, a Marvel executive on my side who was able to tune in to their knowledge about, okay, if you want to do this, it doesn't work because in this comic book that happens or in this movie this character has this so let's come up with something else so they were really controlling the overall universe what was really something elaborating because it helped me finding the right ide ideas and making the right choices so it's very much a collaborative process because i know an insanely collaborative process yeah uh, in a very passionate way and uh, i i really liked it you know i worked with other studios mm where there's not, not such an involvement. Uh, and I liked it so much better because it, really, it also made my ideas sharper and smarter and, and more creative because uh, 
there are restrictions and the restrictions makes me more creative person. And was there kind of a collaboration with the other directors following your two episodes to kind of continue your vision because you kind of built yes. the first two episodes. So how much how much were you involved with the rest of the series? No, I, I was not so much involved because I had to go back to LA, cut my episodes, mm. uh, direct the visual effects. But I met a few of them and uh, uh, we made a package of what my attention was what the things that we wanted to achieve, what the vision was, the the tone was, so they could follow that that path. Ah, okay, that's brilliant. And so with you and Rowan, because you and Rowan's been a name in the UK for a fair amount of time, <coughs> what was it like casting him as a villain? Because I've never seen, I don't watch Game of Thrones, so I wasn't aware of him being so hateful. So I think I'm the only person in the world to go, bloody hell, it's you and Rowan as a villain. And from the clip, there, there's, a kind of a sad charm to him. How do you play that character so kind of, because if he's a human, really, yes. how do you play that character as kind of having a a moral compass and not just as a super villain? Yeah, no, I think that was the good thing about his character and what Ewan brought to the table. You know, he's a really good actor, really serious actor. And uh, so great about the character is, is that, you know, he doesn't believe in the caste system that has the inhumans. Uh, he believes in everybody's equal. And so in his struggle being the lowest caste because he's human, he has no superpower, uh, it was a big struggle for him to fight and that made his character very depthful. And, um, and so and I think he embraced that and he really focused on that. And for me, it was a kind of a really cool way of finding then the tones and the, the moments to convey this to an audience and to really tickle the communication between him and the brother who's really the king and he's kind of taking over this kingdom so it's um it was it, i think it's the most one of the most fascinating characters of this series i'm really i'm really really excited to see it and i, th I, I thought it was on netflix for a brief moment because of the uh, the font on the post i got right. distracted for a moment but also so one final question is with black bolt because i know black bolt is the probably most powerful kind of character arguably one of the marvel universes was there ever a limit where you kind of where you, where you struggled with finding this character's place? Um, no, there was not really a problem because I think it was already well written on the page. Um, I think it was really complicated for the actor to find his place because how do you play a character that cannot speak? Mm. And you are a king, you have to rule a kingdom, you are a husband, you are a lover. How do you do these things without really saying a word? And Anson found, I think, a really the actor Anson found a really uh, nice way into this character. And then me as a director, you know, you then trying to help with the camera angles and with the other actors involving with him to give him the the right tone and the right rhythm and the moments to to glow, even if he doesn't speak. For example, at the end of that, that dining room table uh, yeah. scene, what you saw, you know, he's then sitting there waiting for Gorgon to really be angry at what he's done and putting his fist down. But you see everything on his face and you know what he's thinking. You know that's kind of, it's coming and, I, and he's going to be angry at me. You see it all in his angle and that's all him acting and me as a director finding that moment, communicating with him, getting the angle right. And uh, so that's a blast. That's that makes my job so interesting.